I have begun 2018 talking a lot about habits. And there is a saying that is said every single meeting at two support groups, great support groups in this country, Al-Anon and Alcoholics Anonymous, that goes something like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I think this is a great saying to take with us wherever we go, and especially in our businesses, because I spend a lot of time with clients who spend a lot of both of our time talking about things and worrying about things over which they have absolutely no control. When indeed there are many things in our lives that we can definitely control. And we really need to get in the habit of spending our time on those things and not on the things that we have no control over in the first place. May we be given the wisdom to do that in 2018. So we know we can't control cleaners, so we aren't going to talk about that today. What we are going to talk about is something we can control, and that is the, that is the supplies that our cleaners are using and auditing those supplies to make sure that they are staying in good condition and that the cleaners are indeed using them. Supplies are, after all, the second most important thing you supply to your, clean, your cleaners. Of course, the most important thing is a cleaning process, but they cannot follow your cleaning process if they don't have the right cleaning tools. So when you talk about supplies, you talk about really four areas. What they need, why they need them, what they have now, and what they don't need but they have now. So let's talk first about the first supply they need, the most used supply by every cleaner, whether they're cleaning a bathroom, whether they're long dusting, or they're cleaning a kitchen. What is the very first thing that a cleaner needs to be able to do a cleaning job in any, following any cleaning process, I would hope, in any, any home. I would hope that you are all saying long duster, but my guess would be about 50% of you said long duster. The first thing you do when you clean a home is you remove the cobwebs between the walls and the ceilings and you dust the baseboards at the same time. You just do this with every single visit if you never want a repeat client to see a cobweb in their house, and indeed they never should for three, four thousand dollars a year. With this in mind, I will say that about 20% of the teams I visited in the field in the last two and a half years did not have a long duster in their home, I'm sorry, in their car, and they knew I was coming. It would be one thing if they had no idea I was in town and I snuck in on them and started riding with them, but they were thought they were all ready for me to join them that day. And they knew I was going to train them. Even after they watched the dusting video, they would get in the car, go to the home, and realize they had no long duster. Clearly, that wasn't a habit with that team. Or they would have a duster with a pole that, with us, didn't reach any higher than nine feet. So we would have to bypass cobwebs growing up the walls that were only at 10, 11, 12 feet up. It is, again, I believe, our obligation as a cleaning company to make sure that a customer who pays three, four, five, six thousand dollars a year never has to see a cobweb in their home. But that is not possible if you don't have a long duster. So why do we need these long dusters? Well, you've been seeing pictures on the bottom go by as I've been talking about this, and here's a couple, another one. The ceiling fans have phenomenal amounts of dust on them. We actually had to put the bed sheet that we just took off, lay it down over the bed when we got to the part of the dusting in that room because the dust was so thick it was coming down in clumps and laying on that bedspread. We needed something to gather it up with. Cobwebs where the ceilings meet the walls, cobwebs on beams. Cobwebs that just simply shouldn't be there for people who are having their home cleaned every other week or every week. And I want to tell you folks right now, since the day I started visiting homes, I only take pictures in weekly and bi-weekly homes to substantiate the need for process cleaning. These homes have been cleaned by these same companies, these same teams, numerous times or I wouldn't be in their training because that is a prerequisite before I will train a team. So, what do they have to 
clean with long dusting. As I said, many of them didn't have them. We'd go back to the office and get one, and the owner would say, oh my gosh, you need to order some of those right away. Again, everyone knowing I was coming, I'm getting better at this now and trying to make sure that they have enough of everything before I get there. But indeed, it all comes out new, so you know that it wasn't used before. You can't do this without the proper tools. What you're seeing on the bottom of the screen now is one of the tools that we took out. We went to dust, we did the first corner, and this is what it came down as. These are things you can control. And I believe if you expect your cleaners to tell you this, well, you know what? If it looks like this, obviously they aren't, and that's another situation you need to fix, but another topic. You don't have to talk to them, and I'll talk about that at the end, to make sure that they're doing their cleaning using the right clean tools and bringing you problems when they have them. Well, you do have to talk to them. But the next thing I want to talk about is cleaning cloths. Uh, cleaning cloths are, oh my gosh, since the invention of the microfiber towel, you have no idea how wonderful your world is. We used to use 8,000 terry cloth towels a week and have to shake the lint out of every single one of those before they went out in the field so our cleaners didn't have to deal with that lint. Today you have microfiber towels. That took us down from 8,000 towels a week to 2,600 towels a week. But I'm not sure that your cleaners are educated on how to use them, and I'm not even sure y'all are educated on how to use them. Cleaners open them up and use them open. If they would keep them in quarters, they could clean a whole house, well, they could clean a bathroom on two towels. And I've taught this in the field. Owners are amazed at how few towels the, the cleaners are using after they learn the process for, a process for cleaning. So, but also I question whether or not owners are educated on microfiber towels. The one towel you absolutely positively have to wash alone is window cleaning towels. They are the most wonderful towel in the world, but if you wash them with something else, they're going to pick up the oil from other towels, and by design, they're microfiber. They're supposed to suck that stuff up, and they won't necessarily all wash out in the wash. So if there's any oil left after you clean these towels and dry them, and they try and clean a mirror with them, it's going to leave a streak. But if you wash them alone, I will talk about this later, great tool. Um, but the other thing you need to make sure you do is don't wash. I'll go to offices where I'll see them washing the floor mops, which are microfiber, with the last load of towels that came in. Well, that has ruined that last load of towels because, again, floor mops are different than microfiber. They have just a tiny bit of lint on them. If you rub your hand across, you can feel it. Microfiber towels have no lint on them. Some of that lint from those floor mops will get on those other towels, and they will not work as good as they used to work. Wash your towels separately. The wisest thing to do would be to color code them by room and by type and wash the same colors together. Back to mirrors, glass, and window towels. They have to be washed separately. If you want the answer to streakless mirrors, and believe me, a couple of years ago we spent way too much time worrying about streaks and mirrors and not enough learning a process until I learned in California there are Several towels, I believe, that do this. They used a light blue microfiber towel that has very little nap to it whatsoever. You dampen it, and you clean that mirror, and you walk away, and it, it looks a little foggy at first, and I guarantee you within a minute it is absolutely streakless. There is no better way to clean a mirror. It is efficient, it is quality driven, no streaks, and no window cleaner. So it is also cost effective. But the only way it works is if you keep those towels separate. If you have towels now that you've washed with something else, they cannot be window towels. You'll have to go to a whole new color and keep them separate and have your cleaners put them in a gallon baggie that you should su supply for them. Any window cleaner rags go in that gallon baggie separated from their other towels when they bring them into you. But it's an education thing, and it's a time thing that you have to teach them. It needs to become a habit, and then they will do it like this. If they don't have their baggie, they'll be asking for it. You have to supply them with what they need to clean. You can't be giving them towels like the one you're looking at now on the bottom of the screen. They could easily catch on to anything and give you some breakage and damage, much less what it looks like to a homeowner who's home saying you clean with these towels.
who's paying that kind of money. So what they have, what they need is long dusters that work, microfiber towels for mirrors and a separate bag to carry them in, mini bags that work with an education course on how to take care of the mini bags because brooms should not be used, and tile brushes. Hardly any team had narrow tile brushes, not not a toothbrush, it's not strong enough, not a metal brush, but one with plastic uh, bristles and it's narrow. Both, um, well, there's several suppliers that have them, but they need to be able to get behind the fixtures in kitchens and bathrooms where it's very tight against the cabinet wall and you need to get the tile brush around the fixture bottoms. If they don't do this every single time, I have been in homes where this cleaning service probably states they've been cleaning this client since the day the house was built, maybe two, two and a half years, and the grout and gunk, I mean, I'm sorry, the gunk built up around the fixtures is so deep that I'm not sure they're ever going to be able to get it out because the cleaners never used a tile brush. Or it's built up so much by the time they realize to use a tile brush, it's too late. If you keep using a towel brush from the day that a house is built, you will never see any gunk and it will look always like that house was built yesterday, which is your job, your integrity as a cleaning service owner, to make sure that home looks as good the day they move out of it as the day they moved into it, if they moved into a new home and have only used you since. So, why don't cleaners use towel brushes? Well, number one, you aren't providing them for them. Number two, they keep them in their buckets and they're not going to go get them. So the last tool that I recommend you get them and provide for them, and it's not a uniform, it's a tool, is a cleaning tool belt. You need a lined cleaning tool belt that allows them, that's easy to use with big billet pockets, it'll hold plenty, easy access, but it'll allow them to put that wet tile brush back into their apron without getting them physically wet. They don't want to go from one house to another in cold weather with wet jeans. But if that tile brush doesn't stay in that apron pocket, I guarantee you they're never going to go to the bucket and get it. It needs to be convenient and it needs to be comfortable. What they do not need? They don't need green scrubbies, folks. Nearly every office in the country, I saw massive damage that could cost owners lots of money in these homes that they've been cleaning since the day they were built, where the fixtures are absolutely scratched. It is from green scrubbies. And I see it in the carrying caddies of the cleaners. I had a difficult time with my cleaners as well. I won't deny that. They grab them from underneath the customer's sink because it helps them clean so much better and faster. But you cannot simply, you simply can't have them carrying them because they don't know when to and when to not use them and they are just so destructive on anything they touch. Mirrors, fixtures, marble. I audited my cleaners, caddies and cars and then my field managers took that over and audited the cleaners, caddies and cars every single week at their one-on-one. -on -one. We made sure that things weren't there that shouldn't be there and things were there that should be there. It was a way of auditing whether or not they were actually using your cleaning process. They don't have a long duster, they're sabotaging your system. They don't have an apron, they're sabotaging your system if you use aprons. It's a very easy way to keep a handle on whether or not your cleaners are using the proper process, following the proper process if you've given them the proper tools by auditing their tools. You don't even have to go out in the field. You can do it from the office. We did it once a week, same time. I highly recommend you set up that schedule and make it a habit in 2018 to check your cleaners' cleaning supplies once a week. If they have brooms, get them out of their cars and teach them how to use mini vacs. Brooms do nothing more than move dust around. As they're sweeping, I can literally see the dust flying back into the air, and the time it takes to keep moving this pile of dust from one end of the kitchen to the other, when you could just suck it up and keep on going, never ceases to amaze me. It takes too long, it's too inefficient, and the quality is really poor, 
because little specks of dirt still fall between the broom and then it is the job of the mopper to try and pick up these little flecks which is if you ever hear see a company that uses flat mops you hear them pound them against the floor all the time because they're trying to get all that junk off that mop they're really using it as a broom and not a mop a second flat broom minivacs take care of all of those problems so folks in 2018 i encourage you to control what you can control and find the serenity to leave behind what you cannot change so supplies are a very easy thing to control it's just a habit you have to establish and never break that habit regardless of how many other things walk in your way because remember they can't follow your process if they don't have the right tools so set up that schedule meet with them once a week talk to them about their tools they'll love absolutely love the fact that you're that involved in what they're doing and if you need some help doing this, of course, I would love to come to your office for a week and help you set up the whole process and teach them all the process of cleaning. You can visit my website at www.successmadeeasy.com, spelled M-A-I-D, or you can call me at 512-964-9750, and we can chat about me visiting your office. Thanks for your time, and I'm eager to see you next time when we discuss another easy habit to establish in your office that will make a world of difference in your quality, your serenity, and your growth.